Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm going to be reviewing two gaming mice, comparing them uh, while playing Battlefield 3. We have the Savu on the left, the Cone on the right, and I'm actually working with the Wirecutter, that's the Wirecutter.com, to help them put together a really extensive article on the 13 best gaming mice. Now they're going to go extremely in depth. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the basic feel, the basic functions of them in Battlefield. Starting off, we have the Rocket Savu. First thing I notice when taking the mouse out of the box is that it's a pretty small mouse. Sometimes you'll get big honking gaming mice. This one is definitely on the small side, maybe even a little bit too small. I wear a size medium glove and the mouse feels a little bit small for me. Now it's simple, it's elegant, you don't necessarily need lots of buttons, especially if you're a shooter fan, and I believe this mouse was designed for the shooter genre, uh, you really don't need a lot of buttons. Two thumb buttons is plenty, that's all I use when I game. Another thing I noticed immediately when picking up the mouse is that it's extremely light, lighter than the mouse that I'm used to gaming with, which is actually a good thing. Now my personal uh, opinion on how to set up a mouse for first person shooter gaming is to get the lightest mouse you can find and then use an extremely low resistance mouse pad. I used to use a heavier mouse, uh, sometimes with a slightly more resistance mouse pad. And I gotta say, going with the lighter weight mouse, light resistance, you have incredible control and speed. Now the drivers for the Savu are actually very powerful. The first thing that happened when I plugged in the Savu is it told me that there was a firmware update available for the mouse and if I would like to update. So I went ahead, hit OK, uh, took a few seconds to update the mouse, told me to unplug it, replug it back in, I did that. And all of, all of a sudden your gaming hardware is completely up to date. It's really cool, convenient things like that that I really think sets the Rocket drivers apart from some of the other companies out there. Now the drivers themselves are actually very easy to navigate and very powerful. They have an advanced section where you can really get into customizing how your buttons work. You can use a cool thing called the shift feature which essentially allows you to hold down a thumb button and then it activates every other button on your mouse. It can be keyed into something else. So if you hold down your thumb button and you left click, all of a sudden that could be set for an entirely different feature than say shooting in a first person shooter. Now I wasn't going to take advantage of that just now because I'm a simple guy, you know, I like to have my left click, right click, two thumb buttons and I'm pretty much good to go. And speaking about the buttons on the mouse, uh, I believe the thumb buttons are the one area of this particular mouse that I'm not completely in love with. Uh, I mentioned before that the size of the mouse is a little bit small, so maybe the, the placement of the thumb buttons would be perfect if I had a si small sized hand. Uh, but currently, they seem a little bit out of the way, and I feel like I'm losing a little bit of grip when I go to the thumb buttons. And considering I use them all the time to switch weapons in Battlefield, uh, I basically need something that I can hit and still maintain grip of the mouse, uh, a really secure grip, which is something that I'm used to. So when I don't have that, on a mouse then I get a little bit frustrated with it. The scroll wheel is very convenient and easy to click. Something that I always hate on mice is when you try and click the scroll, scroll wheel and it scrolls at the same time. Uh, this one has a very easy to click one so that you're not going to risk scrolling it by accident when you go for that middle mouse button press. Uh, basically the mouse uh, it doesn't have a lot of frills on it. It's straight to business, which is frankly perfect for first person shooters. That's what I prefer in a gaming mouse. I don't need lots of weird little uh, useless features on it. I just need my basic buttons and basic spots, a nice lightweight package. And the Savu really does provide a lot of that. Again, the thumb buttons are pretty much the only area of this mouse that kind of doesn't agree with me, but they might agree with you. It really depends on what you're looking for from your mouse, what kind of grip you prefer. The price of this mouse is about $63 right now on Amazon. I've seen it fluctuate between $60 and $70. And uh, I think it's a little bit on the high side, maybe $10 a little bit more pricey, but again, if you're looking for something really lightweight, solid, and you have small hands potentially, uh, this could be the perfect gaming mouse for you. Next up we have the Rocket Cone XTD. This mouse is a nice looking mouse. The packaging, everything about this just speaks top of the line uh, when you t finally take it out of the box. It feels sort of like the uh, Lamborghini of mice. I gotta say I was very impressed once I plugged this mouse in. It's got really nice labeling on the side. The texturing of the mouse feels really nice. It's sort of got that um, rubbery coating to it, uh, but really smooth at the same time. Now it comes with a set of weights, five gram weights that you can put in the bottom of the mouse if you're looking for a little more weight. So you guys know, I don't really want more weight in my mouse, so I left all the weights out when I was actually testing it out. 
Now, unlike the Savu, the cone comes with several extra buttons. We have two DPI selectors on top of the mouse. We have an extra button in front of the mouse wheel, and the wheel itself can actually be pushed to the left or right. So essentially, your mouse wheel has five different functions you can get out of it, which is very cool. Again, when you plug this mouse in, not only does it light up all cool with these different LEDs, but it gives you the option to update the firmware immediately. Another really nice feature. The grip of this mouse is just a dream. When holding it, uh, everything just feels like it's in the right place. The thumb buttons are placed very nicely. You feel like you have a very, very solid grip on the mouse. It's not taking your hand too far off the pad, so you still feel like you're connected with the mouse pad giving you that extra sense of mobility. The drivers have several more options than the Savu do. You can actually set the DPI settings in increments of 100, which means I was able to replicate my uh, previous mouse settings perfectly when upgrading to this one. So I didn't have to get used to some new mouse sensitivity setting or have to spend some time trying to get it identical to my old mouse sensitivity. I was able to just dial in the DPI and all of a sudden I'm off and kicking with a mouse of the exact same sensitivity. Now on the website they advertise the cone as being a uh, mouse designed for extended gameplay and I can totally see that. It's a very, very comfortable mouse to use and I don't think it really sacrifices comfort for performance. You know, that's sort of always been uh, this idea of trade-off with mice is that if the mouse is too comfortable, uh, you're probably not having the right kind of grip on it. Uh, you're probably not getting enough control. Well, I think the cone really does find the best of both worlds here. I have a great grip on the mouse. I have feel like I have excellent control and it's very comfortable. Now the weight of the mouse is a little bit heavier than I prefer. It's not too much heavier and even with the weights out it does still seem to weigh more than the Savu and my uh, my old school Death Adder which uh, I've been using for a long time. So uh, again I'm sort of a fan of the extremely lightweight mice but at the same time while using this mouse I really didn't feel like I was being restricted by the weight uh, in any way. Now I played quite a bit with the Rocket Cone on uh, No Shark Canal's TDM just because I wanted to test it out in a match that was going to require me to move around a lot extremely quickly. I wanted to see if the weight of this mouse was going to actually hinder my performance and I gotta say I was pretty much tearing it up with the M5K on this map. I mean it's a great weapon for this map but I wanted to make sure the speed of this mouse was not going to be affected by that weight. Now one area where I did find very, very minor criticisms of this mouse was the pressure required to left and right click. Now I'm used to an extremely lightweight click resistance uh, and it does have a very low distance for clicking. Some mice have high distances to get that left and right click which means it's going to take longer for you to spam click but uh, the cone does have a very low distance so you can spam fire very quickly. It's just the pressure required to push down the button is a little bit more than I prefer. Now it's something that if you have a very large hand or heavy fingers might be ideal for you to have a slightly higher resistance so your fingers don't actually press the left and right click button on their own. But I have to say for me personally I would prefer a pressure slightly less than what the cone currently offers. The scroll wheel also has a little bit more resistance than I would prefer. I like things to be very loose, snappy, not require too much pressure to push them down but the left and right uh, Basically angled pushes on the scroll wheel require a little bit more effort than I would like. Scrolling the wheel and clicking the wheel down again require a little bit more force than I prefer. These are just things that are again very minor but for extended periods of gameplay or needing to be as fast as humanly possible uh, there is going to be a very very minor difference with this mouse. Those things being said though I still think the Rocket Cone is an amazing mouse it's just a dream to use and on top of that it looks amazingly good. Anybody that sees this mouse or if you take it to a LAN party I guarantee you you're gonna have the best looking mouse there. It's just sleek elegant. It's got a very cool light alternating pattern on there, which I normally find gimmicky, but somehow the Rocket Cone makes it look awesome and elegant and stylized. Now for all these cool bells and whistles, you're also going to get a pretty high price. It retails for around $90, which definitely makes it one of the more expensive gaming mice that I've seen, 
but I feel like Rocket does a lot to justify the price point of this mouse. Uh, you're not going to find anything out there that just feels as well built as this one and performs as amazingly for basically the size of the mouse it is and how many features that comes with this mouse. Now if you want some more information on these mice or if you're thinking about buying one of them I'm going to leave some links in the video description for you. Also, when the wire cutter article comes out, it's not out yet, and you want all the detailed stats and comparisons between 13 different gaming mice, that will be linked in the video description, so go ahead and check that. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.